Uh, just to, just uh, just want to thank a few people here. I know we're going to go into the Q and A, but um, thank you, Tyson, for having me here at the uh, Cornet. It's it's really been a privilege. Um, thank you, Jason, backstage, and uh, Patricia, who's my right hand in most everything I do. My son and Mark, who without them, nothing really wonderful ever happens, and or happens right, and they give me a reason, and have so contributed to all my creativity with all their genius. I want to thank my extraordinary cast. Yay, Rose! <laughs> I have known since she was 14, and of has course, a terrible sinus infection and sounds bizarre tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Tom, who, who I adore. <laughs> and Jono, who has contributed so much, really you know, to this, and you know, it's, it's helped me with so many details in this, and this is wonderful performance. It's not easy doing four or five people. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to then thank Penn USA for supporting, and Los Angeles Magazine, Rare Bird, who, who just really just puts on the greatest, greatest kick-ass performances and, 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 and literary events of any place in town. And I'm so privileged to be part of one of them. Yeah. And if somehow I have left someone so obvious out, I am so, so sorry. And, um, and um, yeah, so... And I'm, I'm just really glad that uh, Jerry Stahl is, is going to, we talked for this two hours last night. <laughs> on the phone, on the phone. <laughs> and here we go with the Q&A. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, is Don Murray here? Sure is. Okay. Should I go out and see Hoodlum Priest? That's oh, thanks. Oh, yeah. The great movies ever made. Thank you. Um, Susan, I wanted to ask you right off the bat, um, Marilyn was such an important part of your father's life and loomed so large. I wonder if her shadow was sort of cast over you growing up and how that affected you. Um, I think more so as I probably in the last 10 years because I became mature enough and wise enough to understand how extraordinary she was and what an impact she had on other women 
and what an impact she had on my life unconsciously. Um, she allowed a woman to believe that you could be attractive and also be sexy and also be smart and also take charge of your life and dare to do things that most people wouldn't, most women wouldn't consider at a certain time and place. And she was a great influence in that respect. Um, it was, you know, uh, gosh, sure, she's Marilyn Monroe. I mean, yeah. Did you have any interaction with her? Um, in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little girl and I was in the back seat of a uh, station wagon. She giggled a lot and they say she was Marilyn, but I think, you know, there was a lot of Marilyns. There was, you know, Darlene, there was Mary, there was, you know, there was just so many. I, I, I was always around so many kind of and the glamour girls that, you know, you didn't really think that's Marilyn Monroe. Do you know what I mean? I was so little. I was just a kid. And, and, but, you know, I think she's lived in my heart and she's part of our family and in that respect. And, and, I, and I just know, and I know Patricia could say this, that sometimes we'll be sitting there and I'll be writing about her and then sometimes a, a door slams, a window opens and there's a gosh of cold air flop comes in. And honest to God, I think it's her. Yeah, 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 no, I, I do believe it. I think there's some, something somewhere, and she was, her presence was so big that someone who has such an immense power over the world, and who is still, after 50 years, still in our consciousness, mm -hmm. has must have that. I don't think you ever leave in some way. And I, I say that in a very positive way, not some, woo. <laughs> <laughs>
when I got in, I, in the bus stop, uh, I had uh, it was a very interesting experience for me because I had been offered uh, movie contacts before, first when I was 19, when I was usher at, at CBS. And I, I turned it down because it was what I call the slave contract, where they were pitching the and they were And then uh, when I got on Broadway and the Rose Tattoo, I was offered uh, uh, contracts again for 10 times as much money, but it was still a slave contract, so I turned it down again. And when I got back from uh, overseas, uh, Josh Rogan, I read from Josh Rogan for a, a, a stage play called uh, The Middle of the Night, uh, and uh, Edward G. Robinson. And then I, I was uh, in a play called The Skin of Our Teeth on Broadway, and Josh Rogan saw that with his wife, Nettie. And uh, he thought that uh, I had a lot of energy in that, and I might be good for bus stop, but it wasn't a comedy, it was a drama. But Nettie reminded him, don't you? Remember how funny he thought he was in the movie for the middle of the night? It's too young for the role, but uh, anyway, she reminded him. And he uh, screen tested me for the part, and all during the screen test, I kept on saying, Josh, I don't think I'm right for this part at all. And he kept on saying, Shut up, I'll tell you what you're right. <laughs> 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 I was very skinny at the time because I got back from, uh, you know, I had been home from the refugee camps for only a few months. And, uh, I had a very bad case of uh, pleurisy that I kind of had in my hands. And so he put on this great big sheepskin coat on. And I kept taking it off during the screen test because it was so high. And he said, put that back on. <laughs> Gosh, I said, I'm dying of the heat. He said, without it, you look like you're already dead. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, to my astonishment, uh, I was chosen to the bar. And then before I left for the, the West Coast, in, uh, one of the vice presidents wanted to meet me, so I walked into his office. And he said, my God, what a skinny runt. No wonder you never took that jacket off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then, and I met Marilyn, and uh, that was an interesting experience because it was her comeback film. She had left movies uh, to study acting at the actor's studio, and this was the first movie coming back. So it was like working in a fishbowl. <laughs> you, had, you had people running up your back every time that uh, you stepped out into the public. The only time you had any privacy was when it was a closed set, which was not very often because of those press around. And uh, it was amazing to me because uh, I, 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 watched, I watched her, I was performing with her, and, and she couldn't make two lines meet. I mean, she would start a sentence and she'd get about eight words out and, and stop and say, oh, excuse me, and, and start out again. And by the time we finished that picture, all the actors who were from Broadway, most of us <coughs> were at Eileen uh, Heckard and, and my wife uh, by the end of the picture, and I'm doing a picture of Blank, and uh, Otto O'Connell and Betty Field. And we all just saw the rushes and saw the stop and go and stop and go. And we thought the film was going to be a disaster because <laughs> we, we couldn't see a performance there. And the studio thought the film was going to be a disaster because they thought I was too big and too loud and that scared the hell out of the audience, especially in, in CinemaScope, people would walk out of the theater. Uh, luckily, the, uh, Josh Logan didn't think so. He, uh, <laughs> They wanted to fire him after the first week when we returned from the rodeo sequences. And he uh, he insisted not. And the only one at the studio that agreed with him happened to be a buddy out of but he happened to be the head of production, so that's how he had to stay. And then we all saw the first premiere, and somehow they cut all these little pieces of Marilyn together into this incredible performance. It's <laughs> <laughs> two things. One thing I thought of, the magic of Marilyn, the magic of Josh Logan to be able to take all these people, to recognize that all those pieces were there, and the great cutter, Bill Reynolds, for putting it together, and the magic of movies. I mean, you could do this on the stage. So no, nobody can act like that on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> only in movies could you do that. It just gave me a, a new appreciation for films, and uh, my impression was that uh, uh, 
she was not ever nominated for an Academy Award, and if ever anyone deserved an award, <laughs> it was she for Bus Stop, because that performance of had, of had such variety. I mean, it wasn't just a plot dimple. She had so many dimensions in that film. Like that, that, that piece of film magic, of her doing old black magic there, and kicking old clothes and to, to uh, send the lights on and off, and, and throwing her scarf the way it did so awkwardly. And it, it was just exquisite. And that she wasn't nominated for an Academy Award was astonishing to me. Wow. Now that you're too late. Woo!